Thanks for hanging out with us a little longer. This is the After the Show podcast. Something we didn't touch on during Three Things to Know today, I wanted to go deeper on because I've only seen, I've seen parts of it. I've tried to watch as much as I could of it today. Mm -hmm. Last night, yesterday evening, Elon Musk unveiled the cyber cab. Now, I thought it was going to be called Robo Taxi, and now the reports are it's called Cyber Cab. Oh, I thought it was called Robo Taxi. I've seen it both ways. I've seen it Robo Taxi, and I've seen it Cyber Cab. And maybe that's just the way the media was labeling it. <laughs> maybe I, so. And what's odd about this, as much as I love technology, I don't know anything about the unveiling, so you'll have to school you can, me up. You can get it. You know, you can dig in this weekend because you're, you're going to want to, Murphy. It's so up your alley. So it was an invitation-only event yesterday at Warner Brothers Studio. Studios in Burbank, California, um, and you know they have like fifty of the cars there. And by the way, they actually look really they cool. They look cool. They they look like something out of a really cool sci-fi movie. And what's trippy and crazy is these things are going to be on the road before we know it. Mm. His entrance was interesting because it was also like something out of a movie. He rides in from the car, gets out, walks onto the stage. <laughs> Puts his arms in the air like Tony Stark. Yeah. I'm thinking, really? He was dressed in all black. And then he just <laughs> addresses the crowd, who's all there, all very hyped and excited. They know that after he speaks to them, he they're going to get to test they get drive. Rides. They get to go. I say drive. Test ride is what it is because you don't drive the thing at all. It drives itself. Right. So he explains it a little bit. Here's some from uh, the stage from Elon. Hey, there's a lot of kind of pain that we take for granted that we think is normal like having to drive around LA in like three hours of traffic. You can fly to another city faster than you can get to cross town LA. So, and you have to drive the whole way. Uh, unless you're in a Tesla, of course. Our Tesla already uh, does quite well at this, uh, you know, supervised self-driving. So supervised full self-driving full self is actually working quite well. Yeah. <laughs> we'll move from supervised full self-driving to uns unsupervised full self-driving, mm. where the car, you could, you could fall asleep and wake up at your destination. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> that, that does make me a little nervous. I don't know that I can give up that much control. You can understand the practical, you know, uh, use for this, like hiring a driver so that you can work on the way or sleep on right. the way. Mm. But he's saying the vehicles of the future do this, and he's he's going to be leading the way. Did you catch the way he says tes he says Tesla? And we've yeah. I've always said Tesla. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, there was also after he spoke, if you were at that event, you could get in and do the test. So here's a little bit of that. As soon as I buckle up, the door closes. Select a destination. Uh, how about this? Uh, New York. Why not? <laughs> no Pick a destination. Mirror. No steering wheel. Mm -hmm. No pedals. Mm -hmm. That's weird. It, yeah, no and steering the videos wheel, of no it pedals. Are weird. Get yeah. in and there. That would make me so nervous. It's got like the wing doors, and as soon as you buckle your seatbelt, your door closes automatically. Oh. And then looking at it, it's really clean and neat, and it's super wow clean. looking. But it's like there's no mirrors, no back. You know, you don't need them to drive, but. I still want a mirror. That's to see why what's he delayed. He delayed this because he was so meticulous about the design of it. Yeah. Apparently, the design changes were for the back of it, and everybody was joking. So it won't look like the cyber truck or whatever. But yeah. it doesn't. It looks it, like a sleek. It looks car. great outside and inside. It's just the whole idea of mm -hmm. all right, take over car. So. It doesn't have the screens the way that a Tesla it's, does. It does. It's got a giant screen. Okay. And it's like it, a 12-inch screen, and that's and what you And you dial up where, where you want to go. go. Yeah, and, and does it have camera views or anything like that where you're seeing what's around you? I didn't see Because it. that's what a Tesla has. I didn't see that, but probably. There's no way it doesn't. It has yeah. to have that. I couldn't tell that from the videos that I watched this morning. So how do they it, – it's just so funny because usually I'm, I'm all over this kind of stuff. How do they manage the safety aspects of it? Do they talk about that? Well, they probably did. And that's probably the reason investors are not so gung ho as they say that investors need a little more convincing. Yeah. You know, not that he needs investors, but I guess I guess he probably does going forward. Um, my, I don't know about that. Yeah. And Murphy. My, also, too, I'm thinking because the, the demonstration they did was around a like a 20 acre mock up city. So mm -hmm. the car would go and turn and turn its blinker on. But it's like they were just creeping around the city. Can you imagine letting that car have its. Mm -mm. way at 70 miles an hour no yeah. that's so well, scary to me maybe it has speed thresholds have they talked about any of that mm -mm. 
Because, you know, the the thing is about driver-assisted vehicles, Mm -hmm. which are very common today, there are even some vehicles now where it's not a premium option. It's actually standard. And a lot of those are on electric vehicles, you know, if if you've never experienced that. And in a a rental. So have you experienced the assisted driving, Sam? Mm -hmm. Do you think you could trust it? Oh, wait. I had the one uh, this summer that it started shaking the steering wheel when I changed lanes. Right. Without using my blinker. Right. That, is that assisted driving? Um, it's a warning. Yeah. Yeah, a warning. That's still. It's a warning, but yeah. the assisted driving will slow down if somebody s- it puts the brakes uh, on no, in front of you. I haven't and, had that. Yeah. So, you know, and that's. It, it's that's, weird, but. It, it is. And that's something that I experience now because that was the next level of technology for me. I like it because of the safety a- aspects. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you have a couple of different choices for assisted driving. It can be just speed control and distance control where you're still 100% controlling the steering wheel. Um, but in traffic, it will put the brakes on for you. It will speed up at whatever your predetermined speed is. And if you're it's closer smart. to the car in front of you than yeah. you meant to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, it will, uh, it's, there are limitations. If it senses that your eyes are not <laughs> on the road or something like that, it will disable itself. That's why I'm wondering how the mm. autonomous works because unsupervised is a different realm whatsoever. And then, mm. The driver assist programs that are now, you know, universal, American, European, Japanese vehicles, all of it, um, you know, everything from, you know, uh, Ford and Chevy and the electric vehicles all the way through Toyotas and Hondas and so forth. um, They, you know, they use multiple cameras to do driver assist on a road where it can see the lines and the markings. Mm -hmm. And then you set the speed and the distance control and then literally it's every now and then it'll ask you to grab the wheel, but it's a in interstate traffic. I actually find it to be safer because oh. if somebody slows down faster, the car is going to slow down. Many times the reaction time is faster than a human, human reaction time. But understand but, that is a that's a, a, that's based on who you are. He finds it safer. I myself do not like it yeah. as a passenger in his yeah. you know SUV. I just don't enjoy it when I know he's not actually doing this stuff <laughs> but it's supervised driving so when elon yes. musk says unsupervised man yeah that's a different league and i would really want to know what the well, safety mechanisms are it's got to yeah. be you know that most of these cars have anywhere from 12 to 15 cameras on them now so mm-hmm. it's monitoring everything mm-hmm. but you know there are weather conditions that can impair that mm-hmm. um you know ice and snow and those kinds of things it, if the cameras get covered it compromises yeah. the ability for those cameras to do their job Everything or, or worn out road markings you know if the right lane, exactly the stripes are gone right yes yep. my concern um, about that is no steering like you were saying like okay please grab the you can't steering take wheel. over you have no control yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so that well, part did so they didn't address that in the, well here here's what's up I only had 10 minutes to watch it. Eight yeah. eight minutes, really. It's been a busy day here. Yeah. So probably they did address it because they spent a whole night on it Yeah. in Burbank, California. And you can spend your weekend on it and you'll get those answers. I only got the basics. And I did, but I did try to get some basics for you for this. He also, in addition to the uh, Cyber Cab reveal, which everybody got to ride in, he shared plans for a robo van, which can carry have it. 20 people. They did have it. Yeah, it rolled out. That can carry almost 20 people. And then he's talking about Tesla's humanoid Optimus robots that will be able to in the future. See, this is like, okay, <sighs> babysit, walk your dog, serve drinks, all that babysit? kind of Babysit? I don't know about that, Elon. I don't know about that. Well, and you see, I also want to know, how are these electric vehicles? Or are they combustion engines? You know, probably electric. But I would assume and, electric. And so, mm-hmm. if it's electric, then how does That's it go? Game. How does it go charge itself? Because you're not going to be steering it. If you're if you're getting a robo and, and maybe they're limiting the you know how where they go, mm-hmm. but it's got to be able to return to its own charging station oh, at some um, point. You know those ones they have in San Francisco, the the Wemo is that uh, self driving cars? Mm-hmm. They have like Wemo parking lots. It's like they all return to base. <laughs> At the right. end of every day or oh. at the end of every ride. Those are the ones that, during a storm that were going yeah, off. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask yeah. you. That, yeah. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And so they go back and they automatically yeah. charge themselves. I don't yeah. know how it human. works. They just all go back to home base. I'm a, maybe there's somebody watching the lot that goes and plugs them all in. I don't it's know. just, you know, it's, it's ridiculously fascinating because as kids, this is all the kind of stuff that was fantasy and you know man wouldn't it be cool or it's movie the jetsons cartoon mm-hmm. was the whole thing about everything on the planet being automated i mean i think even 
George Jetson got in his own spaceship that flew itself, if yeah. I remember correctly, right? Yeah, so, parked itself, too. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, this is... Well, I want to say this. like, it's real, but... I, it's hard I, for... I used to it, It's too. hard for us to imagine a future where th- this... All vehicles are this way, and I'm sure someone like an Elon Musk envisions a future where that's where we're going because of the ability for it to not make as many mistakes, all those reasons. But let's remember the human component of loving to drive. Yes, if, you, if you're if you stuck in three hours of traffic every day in L.A., you don't love to drive. But I know that you love to drive, Murphy, and there are yeah, times when I enjoy driving. It, you know, it's, yeah, you're there's right. something about that that gives, it's not just about control. It's, it's something you do. It's context, though. If, if you live if you live in New York and you work in Manhattan, you're going to ride the subway because it takes way too much time for you to drive your vehicle from wherever it is that you're living Can't into the city and either. park and yeah. all those things. And so, you know, I can understand that. But in cities that don't have that kind of, uh, you know, public transportation and you're, yeah, I agree with you. I do. I enjoy component. the drive. But not in a you know ninety minute traffic jam that's bumper to bumper and not moving. Yeah. And for people who are trying to get things, who need that time, I guess to do their job or whatever, I can see how something like this sure. would work. You know what my concern is, and I'm not. I really am not a conspiracy theorist. I don't buy into conspiracies and that mm. sort of thing. But if for some reason the internet collapses, oh, goes out, GPS fails. All these vehicles absolutely are depending on a combination of yes. Wi-Fi connection or, you know, uh, what do you call it, um, 4G. You mm-hmm. know, most of these vehicles all have 4G connection, and they're using yep. GPS and a combination of that mm-hmm. to accomplish their location. Correct. And so, you know. Is now, Elon going to use the Starlinks since he owns those too? I'm I sure. I, that's, that's a good question. I don't know. Why, why uh, wouldn't he? But, you of know, course. It, the, you know. The more I, I guess what I'm saying is the more dependent we become upon that. Now, understand also the reason that plane is able to fly on autopilot is also because of mm-hmm. GPS satellites mm-hmm. and all of those things also. So GPS failure would, you know, it would affect literally everything that we do now from tracking weather to, you know, yeah. vehicles and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But the more that you the more dependent we become maybe that's why something that doesn't have a steering wheel sam like you're saying or mirrors or something where you can take manual control yeah yeah i i don't know that the day will come where there's an autonomous plane that doesn't have mm-hmm. you know it's yeah. it's wheels and it's mm-hmm. manual throttles and all that kind of stuff well, but, I, know but I think about those kind of things you know yeah well, and what if have... that what if that fails while you're on the road? I mean, I'm sure Elon's thought of or, that too. Or thirty thousand feet in the air. It, it, maybe it pulls itself over, you know, or or or, or, or whatever. Well, sorry it's to only be... give you a little taste, but I know you're going to want to dig into it this. Well, I'm I'm all about it now. Yeah, <laughs> you see me on YouTube, you know exactly what I'm doing, Jody. Missed any part of the show? Get it all on the Murphy Sam and Jody podcast.